Hi everyone, my name is Andrew, and today I'll begin a new series of videos introducing finite state transducers. So for this first lecture, I'll be introducing the idea of a finite automaton, its definition, and some of its applications. Right? So let's get right to it. So informally, a finite automaton is a collection of finite states and state transitions. We can think of the finite states as the circles you see here, and the state transitions as the arrows. Right? So for time being, we ignore the labels. Um, the labels are the stuff that you see on top of the arrows. Right? So you can see here, here are four different types of finite automaton, and hopefully we'll get to discuss them as these lectures progress. So before we get too deep into it, we have to ask ourselves, right, what are some of the uses of a finite automaton? Now, a straightforward example would be um, something known as subsequence detection. Now, suppose we are given a binary string, right, and we are tasked to find if there's a subsequence of one zero uh, that's occurring between the binary in in between the binary string. Now, this particular finite automaton will allow us to tackle the problem. Now, how it, how it works is that suppose you feed a binary string into the finite automaton, right? If it sees a zero, it will take this transition, and if it sees a one, it will take this particular transition, right? So the task then becomes whether or not there, there exists a path that you can start from x naught all to the to x two. Uh, if, if you manage to make it to x two, you can actually stop and declare that there is, there is a present of uh, one zero within the binary string, right? So for example, let's try with this three binary string, right? You 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 start, you see two zeros, right? You will take this path zero zero, right? One zero. Now for and I reached x2, the final state, which means I can stop and declare that for the first string, there's actually a pattern of one zero inside it, right? Now for the second string, well, from the naked eye, you can tell that uh, it's very clear that, 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 that the one zero is not present within this uh, binary string. So let's try it out, right? So you start from x naught, you move three times right, in the direction of zero. So you move one time, two time, three times, and you see three ones. You move one, two, and three. So at the end of the string, you didn't really make it to x2, right? So you can stop and declare that there is uh, no such uh, pattern within the binary string. And for the last example, you can see, right, you start, you see one, zero, right? One, zero, one, zero. And you realize that you actually reach the final state three times, in which, of course, you can declare that there's actually a total of three occurrences of one, zero within the binary string. Now, this is just one of the many examples. Um, let's move on to a more exciting and more interesting application, right? Um, it's called the modeling of uh, behavior in bots. Now, if you play games, you know that bots are in-game in characters that are controlled by the computers, right? Um, not, not to be confused with non-playable character. Now, once again, suppose you have a bot that's wandering around, right? And uh, it's roaming around, and each of these state represents an action, and each of these state labels, right, weak enemy, powerful enemy, escape, and this particular one, um, they all represent the situations that your bot may run into. So suppose your bot is roaming around, right, and then it encounters a weak enemy. Well, of course, you'll proceed to fight it, right, to the point where either the enemy escapes or it dies. And if it does, it will just return back to roaming. And uh, if it encounters a powerful enemy, right, you'll begin to itself will it begin to flee, right? And if it manages to escape the powerful enemy, it will just return to the original state of roaming, right? So you can see that this simple final automaton here, right, captures a very simple bot behavior within games. Now, of course, uh, there are many, many other applications as well. So moving on to a more rigorous definition of a uh, final automaton. Um, normally, the mathematical definition is written as a five tuple, right? It's written as Q, A, E, I, and F. Now, Q will represent the finite set of states. Now, for the first example, the finite set of states would be uh, x0, x1, and x2, right? Uh, the second one would be the uh, three possible uh, uh, actions that the bot might take. So this is just a set of states, right? And A will be the alphabet or the uh, transition labels, right? Um, so for the first example, you can see there's either zero or one. Right. And um, E would just be the finite state set of state transitions, which means the collection of all the arrows uh, that's, uh, that's within the uh, finite automaton. And of course, I and F are pretty obvious. It's a set of initial states and a set of finite states. Right. So for example, now we're given this uh, finite automaton, C. 
Now, C uh, has a has Q equals to one and two, which means that uh, within the two circles, right, you have you see one and two, and the initial state will be labeled as one, right. So you can see that this bolded state will represent initial state. Um, it has a one inside, and the final state will have the, be this uh, double double circle with two in it, and the alphabet contains of A and B, which means that everything you see on top of the arrows will be either A or B, right? And of course, the, uh, the, the set of transitions, right? So for example, 1A1 will represent this particular transition. You start from 1, go through A, go back to 1, right? The second one, 1A2, you start from 1, go through A, and you end up in 2, right? And so on and so forth. A 2B2 will represent this particular transition here, right? And this is a very, very basic example of a finite automaton. So moving on, um, I have to introduce the idea of a path, right? What is a path? Well, it's pretty intuitive, right? A path is just a set of directed edges, right? Starting from uh, E1 all the way to e EN. Now, by edges, I really mean the transition, the state transitions. So for, for example, for example, we, we, we use the same example we worked out earlier, right? Pi 1, the path 1, will contain, consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, transitions right you start from 1 a1 one, one so you take this path 1 a1 one, right 1 a2 you start from 1 go through a reach 2 2 b2 2 b1 right 1 a2 and 2 b2 right so this is known as a path within a uh, finite automaton another example right, is you, if you go back to the previous the bot behavior right suppose you start at Rome right uh, you see a powerful enemy right and you start to flee, right? And after that, as you flee, as you're fleeing, uh, if you manage to escape, it goes back to Rome. So you can see that this path, path one, consists of uh, two transitions. Uh, this is also known as a path, right? So more mathematically, more mathematically, given a path pi with uh, transitions starting from E1 all the way to En, we denote Pn, P of n, as the previous state. Uh, for example, if you uh, p p of pi in this case will be equals to e1 because it starts at e1, and uh, n pi n of pi right, will, will be known as the next state, uh, or or rather the ending state of the path. So for in, for example, if uh, n of pi will be equals to e n, right? And uh, for for uh, for this input and output label, uh, certain finite automatons have an input and have an output, and uh, whatever if a path if you if you require a particular input to use the path, right, you, you, you denote it as i pi, and if the path produces an output, you denote it as o pi, right? And finally, um, this particular part here would be very, very useful if you could understand this particular notation, right, which is known as a set of paths. So suppose you have a subset r1 and a subset r2 of q, right? It actually means that the set of paths that starts from any point in R1 and ends up at any point in R2. As long as you have a path that starts from a, a state in R1, ends up in a state in R2, what you have uh, is a path that ends up in this particular collection, right? And for this, it, well, so certain paths requires a input, right? So if you have a path that starts from R1, ends in R2, uh, then it requires an input of x, right? So what happens is that you will be thrown into this particular collection as well. And uh, so on and so forth is that certain path requires an input, it produces an output. So if you, if you have a path that starts from a state in R1, ends up in a state in R2, that requires an input of X and produces an output of Y, uh, you'll be thrown into this particular set as well. Right? So with that, I've come to the end of uh, the introduction to finite automaton. And if you need, require further reading, well, you can refer to these two books, uh, Mathematical Foundations of Automata Theory, as well as Speech Recognition Algorithms Using Weighted Finite States Transducers uh, as References. Right? Uh, thank you, and uh, I hope to see you again.